Hey, welcome back to the 85 South Show Backwoods Lounge. We live here at the One Music Fest with none other than one of hip hop's greatest. The Jada Kid. One of the coldest niggas to ever do it. My boy Taxstone said you can raise a child off Jada Kid's lyrics alone. <laughs> none other than Jada Kid. And I got my dirty boy partner in here with What's me up, today. Man? My brother in radio. Come on, man. What's happening? It's, it's Kiss, man. It's 50 years of hip-hop, bro. Yeah, <laughs> it's lit. Why? There's a whole lot of hip-hop shit going on right now. How y'all doing today, man? Amazing, man. Feeling Backwoods, good. backstage, one music fest. How you feeling? Feeling great. Weather is great. You know, my people looking beautiful. What more can you ask for? What more can you ask for? We here live at the One Music Fest. Now, Kiss, you known for putting putting something in the air, man. And it's only right that you come over here and talk some shit at the Backwoods Lounge. No doubt. How long you been fucking with the Backwoods, G? Uh, few years now. Um, you know, started like everybody else. I started with Phillies, then Dutchies, and then trans. I transformed over to the Backwoods. Uh, rest in peace to Biggie. The first time I ever smoked the Backwoods was with Biggie. Mm. We never, That's dope. we had never even seen or heard Backwoods, and I think he may see Gutter roll up some Backwoods, and we smoked with him, so we knew about him. Well, I say like the last, last five, last ten, seven to ten years, I've been going strong with Backs. Now, Everybody hip-hop. like graduates to backwoods. They're smokers. You know, you gotta graduate to backwoods. It's like that's when you know you're yeah, you'll a real start smoker. Off. You gotta get professional with <laughs> rolling backwoods. First. I was about to say, what was yeah, that you, like you learning? Can't, rolling it ain't the easiest thing in the world. You gotta, you gotta really be a roller to be skilled. Yeah, cut the mean? edges off. You know what I'm saying? You gotta yeah, wet it yeah. and paper towel it. And right. then it them. You know what I'm saying? That way. You know, yeah. that's the whole point. I've been working real closely with the people over there at backwoods. I got some coming out exclusively for the streets. What's it called? Easy Roll? I mean, I might just sell a pack of corners. <laughs> all them corners that get cut off, I might just put all <laughs> them together and make, <laughs> make one flat leaf. You know, I, it was just kicking some ideas around right now. That's fine. Now, Kiss, I wanted to ask you this. Hip Hop just had its 50th birthday, man. Yeah, it's 50 and, and years of hip hop. They were honoring some of the legends up there, but a lot of names got left off. Did you see anybody up there? or? Did you see anybody who got left off that you felt might have, should have got honored on, on the 50th anniversary? Because everybody got their OGs and I've seen their a favorites. lot of people get left off. Yeah. Um, I think people got sidetracked with the whole 50 year, you know, the whole thing, and, and, and let some greats that shouldn't have slipped through the cracks, they didn't get the acknowledgement that they were supposed to get. Uh, I think that's always gonna happen though. Yeah. Especially in our our genre, our people, we you know, we don't tend to big up people to to they no longer here or to something happens. You know what I mean? For the most part. In the other genres of music, they would have make sure they covered everybody. Yeah. But Who's somebody that you would have wanted to honor? Like if you had like I just wanna get this person they flowers now. So many I could name, but you know, dudes like Redman, Scarface, uh, a lot I could go on. I could stay in for hours and name dudes that I feel are underappreciated. Yeah. But you know, hip hop is a, a individual sport. Music is is like something that whoever you like, that's that's your personal. You listen to it in your personal space, and you you feel a way about them that nobody can feel about it. So that's the beauty, beautiful thing of music. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get in a zone or in a mood, you could throw on whatever the fuck you want to listen to them and enjoy it for yourself. But you, know you got to be a part of so many great moments in hip hop for the last shit. Fifty however, years of hip hop. You you shit most of it. <laughs> You've been there for a lot of it, man. A lot of great moments. So what are some of those moments that stand out to you as personal favorites, man? Of course, uh, you know, signing with Bad Boy, being able to meet Big, going on tour with DMX, 
Um, just learning the game, just being a fly on the wall in certain studio sessions, being able to be on the Life After Death double CD that didn't have that many features. So, you know, being young in the game and being honored to be on there was a a big accomplishment that we felt. Uh, being on Hove's album back in the you know early album, doing the Reservoir Dog song. Exactly. Um, like that's what I'm saying. These are these are moments that are gigantic. Yeah, those is those is like priceless. And then you know, being part of one of the most social media. Yeah. And so then those was... are things that you just have to keep up here because it was no no phones. No Johnny Nunez's. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you got to be a part of one of the most legendary groups in hip hop. Come on now. My brothers, you know that, LOX for life. I was gonna say, you know, hip hop has transitioned so much over the last 50 years. What's something, you know how Biggie say like, we never thought it'd take it this far. What's something that you didn't see coming, that you were like shocked that happened? Maybe a trend or Something switching up in the game where you like, dang, I didn't expect this from hip hop. It could be good or bad. I mean, just how just how they implement hip hop in everything that they try to sell or that they mm. trying to the you marketing know, that they're trying it. to market or promote. It started from that's just a bunch of noise and a bunch of thugs and a bunch of hoopla to they need that same noise and hoopla to, to to move the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? No matter if it's cell phones, automobiles, sneakers, you know, fast food, they, they call it they call us for everything. Yeah, man. Without Jadakus, nigga, the walls would never lift up. And, and <laughs> the floor would never do a 360, my nigga. And, and Who black, else is going to have enough coke black, that they got to use the scale that they weigh the whales yeah, with? And, and even entrepreneurship, like... You into Kiss Cafe, you got that going on. Like a lot of, you see a lot of artists now going to black businesses and making sure they invest in their money differently. Like the cars and clothes is cool. I see a lot more artists graduating to entrepreneurship and buying real estate. Tell me about that and your, your quest, what you got going on? Um, You know, rap is a stepping stone. Of course, when you're young, you're gonna blow some money and have some fun and do some reckless things. But as you, if you're able to have a career and you know, and be in it for a minute, you want to start graduating and doing some things, owning some stuff. You know, we got, I think, five. We got six six juice bars. That's Styles and his wife got the pharmacy for life. Oh, no. You know, the supplements is doing well. And then I got the Kiss Cafe coffee with my son and my dad. Um, you know, the hip-hop industry could teach you a lot if you just keep your head up, eyes and ears open about ownership. You go through so much stuff with clearances and things like that with the label that you should get to a point in your life where you want to own everything. Yeah. That you that your name is on or that you invest in, you want to try to be the sole owner or own a big percentage of it or own the whole thing. Come on, like you said, hip hop is like y'all a lot of artists' first introduction to entrepreneurship to and real business. In general, yeah. 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 So it teaches you a lot. I like, too, the trends that I'm seeing of, like, artists going, taking more control of their health and being more on it, like you said, the juice bar. Because, you know, hip-hop, at one point, it was all about... Drugs, drugs, drugs. Drugs, how much lean you could drink. Excess, yeah. Drugs, yeah. Drugs, drugs. And now to see artists now everybody like... everybody talking about getting to the bag, but if you ain't if you ain't healthy, right, fast. you're just going to leave the bag for somebody else to get to. Yeah. Yeah. What was that moment, or when was that moment that you realized that, or, like, in your life? Um, for one, I got five kids. Three of them is very young. Two nine-year-olds and one eight-year-old mm. daughter. So, you just want to be able to go to the park and not pull a hamstring <laughs> going on the slide with them anyway. But uh, just traveling and, you know, being up late, not getting the sleep you need. We, we were able to bump into the juice bar and learn about taking care of your body. Uh, we all have mothers and fathers, grandmas, aunties that got high blood pressure or yeah. some of them type of ailments. We just trying to lower that as much as we could in our communities. You know what I mean? If we could get one person at a time, to, it's hard to just switch how you live or how you eat. But if you could just be mindful of it, then you'll start doing things a little differently. And, Baby steps. You know, Let me, you talking about health, right? Now, I'm a bald nigga. <laughs> I've been bald, right? 
But you were bald for so long. And then you showed up with braids, hairline yeah. intact. So you was just bald because you wanted to be bald. I'm hollering. <laughs> I'm That's thinking you bald because you was question. going yeah, bald. No, that was then a, you wasn't even bald no more. It was, that was braids. Like a, it was, and, and Y.O., that was like a... That was like the thing that, you know, X was like the king, the icon of the town, and Paul Heads was onyx. Paul Heads was right. And I always told Styles and Looch, down the line, when y'all shits go, I'm, I'm growing my hair back. They used to be like, nah, whatever, because they had afros, <laughs> high tops. <laughs> now I'm like, yo, when it's going to be a time, y'all shits going to go, I'm going to let my hair grow back. Fellas, what if that's the key to preserving your hairline? You just got to be bald in First. your younger 20s <laughs> and, then grow back and your save your Re shit. Reverse. <laughs> For later. Uh-uh. The reverse. If you don't push your hairline back. Yeah, no, but you talked about being a dad. I wonder, like, what has being a father showed you or taught you differently about yourself? Like, just from being a, a man in general. Um, it's, it's a, it's, it's, Jaded Kiss is a, it's my stage name. It's my job. You know what I mean? Oh, no. It's a time when you, you got to turn that shit off. When you're around your mother, your family, dudes you grew up with, you know, things of that nature, you go back to just being Jason. I mean, kisses for when they, when the lights and that, when the cameras go on and they hook up the mics, that's when I go to kiss. But other than that, yeah. I'm just Jay. I'm just regular Jason, you know, you know, kiss, whatever. And when you keep that balance, you be all right. You know, yeah. your kids, kids are the honest, the most honest people in the world. They gonna tell you they hate your sneakers, they hate you, <laughs> they hate that song. Yeah. You know what I mean, and it's, it's with no malice, so I try to use my kids, my younger ones and my older ones. That, you know, I don't listen to them solely, but I take their advice and see what's going on in their world. Yeah. Man, you've said so much cold shit on records, so many of the coldest bars and, and all of this. Man. Do you ever put, like, pressure on yourself to be like, nah, I ain't say enough shit on this one? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't say that. Yeah. I mean, it gets a time like when you feel like, see, I love music so much, I can just hear something and make me want to go to the stool. And I think as long as I feel like that, I always want to create. But yeah, yeah. sometimes I'm, I get on my like, nah, you got to go harder, man, go in there and I throw a hold. I have something that I think is crazy, like, nah, you got to be crazy. Man, you be saying some crazy shit. <laughs> Only put the coke in the tires if they miss you. Miss you. Fair sending niggas way up by Lake Michigan. Come on, man. Come that on, man. That shit crazy. Come on, bro. My fucks will air it out. I go way back. Good. Knock yourself out. Man. She used to model for a year and a half. Legendary. Why she stop? <laughs> See, you got this. Is, man, you ain't saying enough, Why? kid. Why? Because if she take her pins out, then her hair fall down to her calf. I don't know if it was spending too much money on hair products and she was she was breaking Something even. Something happened she had to stop. She had to stop, though. Come on, man. <laughs> Super yeah, man. Because, you know, her man, he was the chef up north. <laughs> and he would have got left, but that's, you know. <laughs> Bro, it's like you listen to this shit and it's like, you got so many real life hood problems in there, bruh. Even when you said uh, the niggas had the Sprint cell phone and they was jerking. <laughs> Every nigga can relate to this Come shit, on. bruh. You, trying to do, you gotta try to say the shit that, that, that touch home. You right. know what I mean? Everybody, everybody can't afford a Ferrari or everybody might not know about buying art or things of that. Yeah. But if you say so, everybody been behind on a bill or everybody knows some real life shit, everybody had to make a grilled cheese or some shit like that, they going it's gonna hit. It's oh. gonna hit. Man, I appreciate even with you. the rich people. I appreciate you dropping that type of shit in there and showing the growth and showing the progression. Like in the music, you can still say gangster shit, but you still have you still make sense and you still give niggas like that direction to level up. Like, take my little man to the Gucci store and just show him the loafers. Show him the loafers, man. Don't show even, him. even if he don't want the loafers. Just show him, man. Show him. Show him. Introduce him to him. <laughs> Introduce him to some shit. Some <laughs> new <laughs> shit. Yeah. Then think about it. Right, come so back down there and grab him next time. I just wanted to let you know that 
that type of shit don't go unnoticed. And even the cats from the deepest, dirtiest parts of the South, man, we appreciate you always For fucking sure. with the South love is love. and jumping on them records and shouting us out and showing us love, man, because it's a lot of niggas from a lot of different places that didn't fuck with what, what we had going on as far as Southern hip hop. But man, you have features from rappers all over the game, from on, all over the South. So That's from a nigga from the South, I just wanted to make sure you know that you love yeah, and you respect it out there. Big love. Big, the game. big love. For hip hop. 85 South Show, Backwoods Lounge. Backwoods, None other. Jay Kiss, Jay Nix, yeah. we in here. Come on. Now.